Okay, hello everybody out there. Uh, welcome to Linguistics 441 Advanced Phonetics uh, for the fall semester of 2022. I am your instructor for the course. I'm Steve Winters. Um, and this course is going to be a bit unusual for a couple of reasons, uh, which is why I'm making this video. Uh, so uh, to give you a brief overview of what I'm hoping to accomplish, this is, is advanced phonetics. We're going to learn about phonetics even more than we learned about it in Linguistics 341. Uh, but uh, the modality of the class, I guess you could say, is going to be hybrid. Uh, and that's going to be new for me because it's a combination of both sort of the pre-pandemic in-person teaching methods that I developed over many years and also the mid-pandemic online version of the course that... Um, I worked hard to get up and running uh, while the world was freaking out. Uh, so we're going to have both um, an in-person and an online um, sort of component or sort of versions of this class happening simultaneously. And it's up to you which one you would prefer um, to learn from. Um, so the reason I'm making this video is to try to explain how basically that will work in combination with all the other things we need to know about. Uh, for the course. So um, just to give you a heads up, that's where this is going. But before I get into the details of all that, uh, I can give you some basic information about me. Uh, my name is Steve. Uh, and this course is also kind of unique for me uh, in another way, which is that I did not teach the last uh, section of 341 in the winter semester of last year because I was on sabbatical. Because uh, So uh, Dushan taught you guys in that course. Uh, I'm sure it went great. And I'm sure you're well prepared for this version of 441. But the difference is that normally I would know everybody at this point um, coming into this class and you would know me a bit, but uh, we're going to have to get to know each other a bit uh, from scratch, I guess, uh, for the semester. So that'll be fun. Um, there's also a large number of students in this class, at least signed up at the moment. Uh, I don't think I've ever had much more than 20 students in this class, uh, but I think the last time I checked the um, the course roster, there was about 35 students enrolled uh, in this semester. So that's going to be a lot more grading work for me. Uh, maybe a lot more fun too, we'll find out, but um, it'll be different either way. Uh, and I guess that's a sign that Dushan must have been teaching really well last semester because uh, a lot of you wanted to keep going on with this, which is great. Hopefully you'll still like phonetics by the time we're done with this, but you know, we'll see. Um, anyways, if you want to get in touch with me, uh, you can email me at this address, swinters at ucalgary.ca. Um, and I'm going to mention something that I talked about with my uh, video for the Ling 201 course outline, which is that um, email is a good way to put something in my head and get my attention. But oftentimes it can be difficult for me to find the time to respond right away, just for whatever reason, just the way the email works. There's kind of an inertia you have to get over there um, for some reason. So if you need something where you need a response um, quickly, uh, or just a response in general, I would recommend that you get in touch with me in person. Um, Cause like I said, there's gonna be both a in-person component to this course and an online component to this course. So the in-person uh, modality is more effective in getting a response. Usually if you just talk to me, I can tell you the answer right away for some reason, that's a lot easier than writing an email. Uh, so I recommend you do that um, if you are trying to be efficient. And if you need to see me in person, you can get in touch with me at my office hours, which are happening on Thursdays. Uh, from 1.30 to 2.30 in Education Classrooms 259. That's my lab space over in the Education Building. Uh, and they're also happening on Zoom, so everything's balanced again. Um, so there's a Zoom link for office hours, which you can follow here. Uh, and I'll just be online for an hour every Thursday, um, dedicating my time to this class in case you guys have questions. Um, so just check into that. Um, and I will say, you know, since, whoops, um, since I am doing this both in person and online, you might have to wait online for a bit while I'm talking to somebody in person or vice versa. So, you know, just be patient because uh, oftentimes a lot of people have uh, questions during this class that need take time to sort through. Um, yeah, because it's a bit technical, um, the, the material we cover in this course. So uh, I will also say that uh, if you want to talk to me on phone, uh, probably the only time I'm really going to answer this phone number is during office hours is the lab phone. Uh, otherwise, I'm in my lab sporadically and it's hard to tell um, when I would actually pick up the phone then. Uh, so I'd recommend that you call um, at this time at this number if you would like to talk to me on the phone for whatever reason. Otherwise, maybe try one of these other methods of contacting me. Okay, another reason this class is a little bit unique for me is that it's a Monday, Wednesday, Friday class. So traditionally, I've taught this as a Tuesday, Thursday, Thursday class. 
Uh, but I have um, some family commitments that kind of uh, force me to sandwich my classes uh, in a two hour time block on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday afternoons. So um, I can't mess around with the time for this. Um, so it's going to be a bit of an adaptation, but I think that'll be okay um, because like I said, there's a lot of technical material in this uh, class and it can take a while to absorb and completely understand. So I think maybe approaching it in smaller 50 minute blocks might be a little bit easier than the bigger 75 minute blocks we had uh, before. But again, we'll see. Um, it depends, uh, depends on both you and me to make that work, right? So what are we gonna talk about more specifically? Well, this course continues the introduction to phonetic study that began in Linguistics 341. In this course, students will hone their transcription skills through a small phonetic field study on an unfamiliar language develop laboratory skills for the acquisition of ex experimental phonetic data, acquire in-depth knowledge of the, me the mechanisms involved in the production, perception, and acoustics of speech, and become familiar with the primary theories in the field of phonetics. Upon conclusion of the course, students should be prepared to conduct an honors level research project in phonetics. Um, yeah, and I've had a number of students who have actually gone on to do this, um, and that's fun as well, but it's another year commitment. Um, and if you really like phonetics, it makes sense for you to do that. So just talk to me about that as well. Um, maybe in the future. Getting back to basics though, practical training in phonetics is particularly valuable for professions in language education, whether foreign language education, English education, or ESL. Phonetic training also benefits students who are interested in human computer interface technology and students who are in training for certification as speech pathologists or audiologists. And I've had students go into all three of these fields for sure, and some of these as well. Um, so this can take you lots of different places in life, but of course, Students who major in linguistics should take phonetics. And I know this is an optional course, so I'm glad that you're on board because um, I like it when students are interested in what they're studying, uh, especially if what interests you is what interests me. Um, yeah, I have a little note here on departmental grade requirement, but that's kind of moot because you're already in the class. So what does it matter? I also have a note here on kind of an important um, bit of information, which is the course webpage. So I've already got that loaded up here on my web browser. Uh, but this is going to be the primary source of information for the course throughout the semester. Um, so I would bookmark this link or make sure you know where it is because this is where everything you need to know is going to be deposited online. I've also got a link up here for the D2L course or the D2L page for the course, which is up and I'll make it active after I finish this video. But basically all I'm going to put up here um, are just a couple of things. So uh, on content, I've got this course syllabus that we're walking through right now. Um, and I made a change to it, so I'm going to have to change that online too. But um, that's there. Um, and the reason I wanted to make sure that was there is because it points you in the direction of the website. So there's also a message um, about this non-D2L website uh, and a link to basically put you in, point you in that direction so that you don't spend much time on D2L looking for information about the course. Um, over the pandemic, I think there were a number of people who just thought I would post everything to D2L and nothing anywhere else. Um, and in fact, I was posting just like minimal amounts of information to D2L. And I think they're having a very poor educational experience for that reason. So I'm just trying to not put anything up here just to make sure you're forced to go over here to actually find what you need to know. Uh, so try to ignore this um, and focus on this page. However, um, one thing you will need D2L for is the set of drop boxes um, that I put up here for the various assignments. And as you can see, there's a fair number of them. Uh, some of these are more involved than others, uh, but I'll keep you busy throughout the semester. And like I said, it does seem to be the case that we have 35 different students in the class, which is great. Uh, it's a record. So be, be thankful or happy that you're part of a record setting group, I guess. Um, maybe we can get recognition from the Guinness Book of World Records, who knows? Anyways, so on here, um, I've got a few kind of sample links just so you can see how it works for the video. Uh, so the lecture notes will be up here. If you've taken my 341 course, you, you know how this works. Um, I'll post them in both PowerPoint and PDF. Um, so the first lecture is on um, acoustics and digital signal processing. So, you know, it looks like a PowerPoint. Um, I'm also going to mention before I give the lecture, this, this is actually going to be kind of funny given the structure of the course, but for this web page, before I give a lecture, I'm going to post kind of filtered notes where a like sometimes in the lecture notes, I ask questions and then expect you to answer them in class. Uh, and so I won't sort of post the answers in the lecture notes uh, and I'll take them out for the sort of pre-class notes that I link on this web page. 
And then after the class, after, we, after we've walked through the lecture, I'll repost the notes with the, you know, the answers, the other material in there. Um, so you have the complete set. But if you're one of those people who like to kind of follow along with the lecture notes and take, you know, uh, notes on your PowerPoint slides or whatever, and you come to a spot where there's like a slide missing and that'll be the reason why. Um, so try not to be too surprised when that happens, although inevitably people will be surprised. So, okay. But, um, of course, the funny thing is that I've got um, the lecture videos that I made during the pandemic already loaded up here as well. Um, and I'll probably post these, I guess, after each lecture that I give. I've got one up here already so you can see how this works. These are just um, videos that I made at home in the same style and then I loaded them up to YouTube. So they're kind of um, in internet eternity, I guess. Uh, so I've got an example here. This one's um, a whole list of... Uh, three different videos because got kind of involved. Um, but you can just click on these links um, and watch the video anytime you want. I'm not gonna take these down before class so you can watch them. You, you, you can watch me give the video lecture online if you want before you see it in person. It's gonna be basically the same thing. I, I don't know why you would do that, but you can if you want. Uh, or you can do it the other way around too. You can watch it in person and review it online later too. So nothing should be missed in this course. If you miss a class or anything like that, it's always available basically, but I'm going to like dole it out um, step by step as we go through the semester. So I, if I just throw everything out at you at the at one point in, at the beginning it can seem a little bit overwhelming, like, you know, all these Dropbox folders. <laughs> so uh, like I said, there's gonna be a fair amount of work. Um, it'll be fairly technical in nature, uh, but I don't want it to be too overwhelming. Um, and I've taught this course enough at this point where I think um, it works pretty well for everybody. Of course, some people do a little better with it than others, but Either way, we learn a lot and have a lot of fun as we go. Um, other links up here, um, I've got, um, with, with respect to the videos, uh, I've got um, some videos uh, about the homeworks that we have to work through in class. So right now I've just got one here for the course project. Um, and as you can see here, this is also okay, something it looks like the video you're watching right now that basically tells you how to um, do the course project is gonna, be a similar sort of video as the one I'm making for uh, the course outline. Uh, the course project is a major commitment you have to work through for this class. Um, that's also something where you learn a lot as well because you're gonna be working with a speaker of a language you don't know. Um, so I, that's a whole nother set of videos in its own right. Um, but in addition to that course project, uh, there will be videos that I will post explaining um, how these other homeworks work, like the digital signal processing homework, uh, the Toby labs as well, the, you know, so on and so forth. Each one, I will make a video explaining the basics of the homework and I'll post that online because I'm gonna explain how those work in class as well. Uh, and speaking of those lab videos, um, here's the one for the first Toby lab. Um, so, uh, and I'll point out here since, uh, actually this is a video kind of giving you the answers to um, how the Toby exercise should be completed. Um, and I've made that private. You might be able to see that down here. Uh, and uh, the reason is because I don't wanna, again, have the answers out there before we work through the exercise in class. But you will get the answers either way, uh, whether you're doing the class online or in person. Um, yeah, there's a few other things in here as well, which I'll talk about as we go. Um, and there's a labs link as well. Uh, you'll see the Toby labs up there and the other labs too, by the time we get there. Uh, but the main point is this is the homepage for the course, not anything on D2L. Okay, so this second page of the outline explains what I've been talking about already, uh, but I'll walk you through this in detail. So the material for this course will be delivered in both an in-person and an asynchronous online format. We will meet in person three times a week during the regularly scheduled class times for the course. These in-person sessions will follow the traditional university class format wherein I will deliver lecture material and also occasionally lead the class through labs and sets of practice exercises that are based on material which has been presented during previous lectures. For those students who would like to have a copy of the lecture notes in front of them during lecture, I will post slightly filtered notes to D2L and the course website, actually not to D2L. Um, I'm gonna avoid that as much as possible. Uh, I will post slightly filtered notes to the course website at least 12 hours prior to presenting them in class. Hopefully that's enough time for you to download them. Uh, and after class, I will always post a complete copy of the lecture notes that were uh, covered during that day's lecture to the course website. Um, yeah, I'm gonna post an updated syllabus too. 
All right, so for the online domain, I have also made video recordings of all the lectures for the course and posted them to YouTube. Links to these videos will be posted on the course webpage listed above, along with links to the corresponding notes for each lecture. I have also recorded videos myself working through the answers to each of the labs and practice homework exercises, so on and so forth, which I will also post once we have discussed those exercises in person in class. Since all of the relevant materials for the course will be available both in person and online, attendance at in-person classes is not required, and you may simply choose to access the course materials in whatever modality you prefer. I.e., you can learn everything you need to know by, to complete the course by reading the textbooks and watching all the videos I posted online, Alternatively, you can access the same information by attending the class sessions in person. You may also take advantage of both modalities by attending classes in person and then reviewing videos or vice versa. The choice is up to you. Whatever works best for you is fine with me. You don't have to be in class, uh, but I think one of the advantages that we all might get out of this is that we will wind up with people who would rather be online just being online and people who would rather just be in person being in person. So if you do attend classes in person, then I will ask you to be present and attentive to what's going on in class that day. In other words, I'll ask you to set aside your cell phones and any other distracting devices and focus on the material that we are discussing or that I am presenting. If it's too difficult for you to stay focused on that material in an in-person on learning environment, then I recommend that you access that material at home online so that you won't be a distraction to your fellow classmates in person. Hopefully that makes sense, it's pretty straightforward. Um, and I'll say that there are some caveats to that. Like sometimes we will be working on exercises in class for which you will need a computer um, that runs Prot, say, something like that. Uh, so obviously in that case, yeah, I'd, I'd want you to have a laptop or something like that so you can work on it. Uh, and then a lot of people, like I said, like to take notes um, on the lecture on their laptops as well. Uh, I think there's value to that. I think there's value on scribbling it out by hand as well. Um, so, I mean, I'm okay with that. That's fine. Uh, what I don't want is you to just like lose your mind in some other thing that's not course related um, on your phone, some conversation with your friends or whatever. And then that also can distract other people in the class, which makes it harder for them to learn. So if you are in that mindset where you can't focus on what's going on in front of you for whatever reason, then it's better for you not to be there so that everybody else can just be focused on what we're working on at hand. Um, yeah, it's, uh, like I said, it's the class sessions are 50 minutes this semester. Um, when it was 75 minutes, there were obviously times I, when I look out there, I could tell that people were kind of like fading in and out of consciousness, not consciousness, but um, attentiveness. Uh, and hopefully that won't happen as much uh, with 50 minute class sessions, but I know it, it's not always easy to, to stay focused on what we're talking about, especially when it's complicated. Uh, but I'm gonna try my best to keep it fresh and fun. Uh, so that that won't be a problem. I'm just going to ask you guys to, you know, treat the course with the, the same respect on your end as well. Okay, so I don't want to say anything more about that. I should talk to you, however, about how I will grade the course. So there's four components to this class. There are homework exercises, which I've kind of alluded to anyways already. Uh, there's a course project. I've talked about that a little bit. And then there are two exams. So these are all worth an equal amount of your final grade. 25% split between four different components. Homework will consist primarily of laboratory exercises that are designed to improve your skills in collecting and working with phonetic data. We will go over in detail the requisite tools and skills necessary to complete these exercises during the course of the semester. Homework assignments will be posted to the course website and may be submitted through a Dropbox on D2L. Uh, so there will, there's nothing here yet, but there it will be links um, on this homework exercises page, which is where you will get the homeworks, and then you will um, submit your completed homeworks on the Dropbox in D2L. Um, requests to submit homeworks after their deadlines will not be granted without instructor approval, which should be sought in advance of those deadlines whenever possible. So basically, uh, especially with 35 students, like almost twice as many students as I normally have for this class, I don't want to have to be dealing with late homeworks. Um, and you being able to get your homeworks in on time is a good skill to develop anyways, uh, even, in, even in academia. Uh, so I'm going to insist that you get those homeworks in on time, but if you have something else going on in your life which makes it impossible for you to do so, let me know and we can talk about it, basically. Okay, um, and I'm gonna sort of amend what I just said a bit for this course project, um, but I'll uh, talk about the basics of this first. So the course project, <clears throat> again, worth 25% of your grade, uh, 
is a small phonetic field study involving a native speaker of an unfamiliar language. Your goal in this project is to learn how to identify and transcribe the sounds of the unfamiliar language, primarily through data that you have elicited from the native consultant. At the end of the semester, you will produce a final term paper de detailing the phonetic characteristics of the language you have chosen to study. Actually, I'm going to eliminate this. At the end of the semester, you actually don't produce a final term paper detailing everything about the language you have chosen to study. You just detail a specific characteristic of the language you have chosen to study. Um, so I'm going to amend that before I post this as well. But the more important point is that more detail on this project will be provided in an additional handout. Um, because there's a lot that goes into that, I'm not going to dwell on it right now. But basically, this is kind of the main point is that you need to find somebody to work with um, so that you can get sort of the language straight from the horse's mouth, as it were. Not that you should work with a speaking horse, but uh, hopefully you know what I mean. Uh, you're going to get raw original data from an actual speaker of a language and learn how to analyze it phonetically. That is the primary course project that almost everybody in the class will do, and I'll give you detailed instructions about how to, about how to complete it throughout the semester. But if you want, um, I am happy to entertain alternative ideas for course projects. Uh, and a few students have done this over the years if they have some idea in mind about what they already want to work on. Uh, so previous ideas for alternative projects have include, included studies of sung speech, speech produced by a deaf speaker, speech produced by LDS missionaries, uh, phonetic analysis of a fake accent portrayed in a popular film, the perception of speaker age, and the perception of palatalization in Irish. And I think that's all the other projects I can think of off the top of my head, but there were a few more too. Uh, please come talk to me as soon as possible if you have an idea for another project that you would like to work on over the course of the semester. And if you do want to do this, then you're kind of on your own. Not that that should scare you, but you kind of have to take um, you know ownership of your own idea uh, and give me regular updates at the same time that everybody else is giving me um, interim course project reports. Um, so I'll point out here, if we go ahead to the schedule, um, there are five different sort of uh, individual course project reports that all feed into your grade for this component of the class. And they're due, generally speaking, about two weeks apart from each other, uh, including one during finals week. Um, so if you're doing an alternative project, you kind of have to give me updates at the same time as the other people are submitting their um, smaller course project reports. Uh, and I'll also point out um, there's five of those uh, many course project reports, the whole thing is worth 25%. So each one of those is worth 5% of your grade. Exams, there are two. One, a mid one is a midterm and one is a final. They're both worth 25% of the grade. Um, I have modified the way I administer these uh, based on uh, my experiences in the pandemic. So before these exams used to be in person, in class. Uh, now, however, both of these exams will be open book and will be administered online. So um, that's kind of to your advantage, but you still got to know your stuff to get this to work. Um, so I will email you with specific information on how to access these exams online on the days that they become available. But some basic logistical information is that the midterm exam will include a timed component that lasts for two hours and will be available within a 24 hour window. You may start the exam any time within that 24 hour window, but once you start, you must complete and submit the exam within two hours. The midterm exam will take place on Friday, October 14th. So uh, the way this is ideally gonna work, because it's the way that's worked in the past, is that uh, like shortly after midnight on Friday morning, October 14th, um, yeah, which incidentally is my daughter's birthday, what do you know? Anyways, at like 12.01, AM on Friday morning that day, I'm gonna post the exam online with instructions on how to access it. Uh, and then you can have until 12.01 the next morning, Saturday morning, to start working on that exam. But once you start working on that, you have to complete it within two hours. So you could access it at like seven in the morning. And if you do, you have to finish it by 9 AM. Um, that doesn't mean that you have until like, you know, Saturday morning to complete it or whatever you have to complete it within two hours once you get started. Hopefully that makes sense. But you could also start it at like 10.30 at night and finish it, you know, 12.30 after midnight on Saturday morning um, if you'd rather do it that way. You just have to start within that window. The final exam is gonna work in a similar fashion. 
Um, there's also a note here that it will not be cumulative. Uh, it only addresses topics and material covered in the second half of the class. Although as usual, um, you know, some of the stuff we learned in the first half of the class like is relevant for the things we learned in the second half of the class. So you can't forget the first half of that class completely or anything like that. But it mostly focuses on that second half material. It will also have a time component that lasts for three hours and will be available within a five day window. Um, you may start the exam anytime within that five day window, but once you start, you must complete and submit the exam within three hours. Um, it's basically the same way the midterm works, except it's a five day window in which you can work on the exam because I know people have other commitments, uh, like namely other finals during finals week. So uh, generally speaking, shortly after the last class, I'll make this available and then you'll have like five days to um, get started on it. But once you start on it, you have to finish it within three hours. Um, if you are ill or cannot take an exam due to your personal emergency during the scheduled time for an exam, please let me know as soon as possible. Um, here's the grading scale for the course. Uh, I'm not going to say a whole lot about it, but it's there for references sake. Um, so just keep that in mind. I've got two uh, textbooks for this course. I don't focus on these um, as much as I used to, but they're still useful in spite of that. Uh, so they are... Um, Textbooks are recommended, um, not required, because uh, you can survive without reading them. But if you do read them, I think you'll get a lot more out of this course, and you will also think basically understand things better. So the first one is uh, Keith Johnson's Acoustic and Auditory Phonetics. This is the third edition, which is, I guess, about a decade old by now. But this is um, this is a really good uh, textbook for exactly what it's advertised as, so sort of the acoustic and auditory side of things, uh, and a little bit about the perception of speech as well. Uh, and then there's also the speech science primer or primer, if you'd rather say it that way, uh, which is written by a variety of people. And the, this variety of people is a group of speech scientists um, or uh, in, there's more of a kind of disciplinary divide in the U.S. between uh, phoneticians and speech scientists who work in speech and language hearing, speech language and hearing programs and Phonetics, phoneticians work in linguistics instead. Uh, so this has kind of come a little bit more from an applied and therapeutic side, but this is a good uh, textbook um, for lots of technical details, not just about acoustics, like spectrograms and what have you, but also, um, if I can get it, um, more about the artic articulatory details of speech. Uh, and it's a good reference to have, especially if you're thinking about um, becoming a speech language pathologist, or for that matter, an audiologist, if you're going to go on professionally. Um, in a more applied field like that. Uh, so I'd recommend this, not only for this class, but uh, just as a reference um, text, uh, in case you think you're gonna go on to graduate study in some form or another. Uh, yeah, but like I said, you don't have to buy them. You can get by uh, without them because I'm trying to throw as many materials out there uh, at you as possible um, to help you learn as much as you can to do well in this class and life in general. Uh, okay, so I won't say anything further about that, um, my office is my lab. My lab is my office this semester. So that's over in EDC 259. Um, you can use the lab if you'd like to make a recording. It's a good place to make uh, a clean audio recording, especially if you want to analyze it for your course project. So uh, you can do that. Um, please contact me if you'd like to do that. And I'll let you know that my time is a bit limited this semester because I don't have a TA for this course. And I have a huge number of students in my other course as well. So I can't promise that I can be there when you can be there, but I may be able to set up a time um, through one of my grad students to help you out uh, with the lab. There are a variety of places on the web where you can acquire an IPA font for your computer. We talk about these in 341, but I'm just uh, giving you the links here again in case you need them um, again for your uh, computer or anything else. Um, I'm also hoping to... Uh, kind of modify some of these links so that you can not visit them and just uh, use them through my website, but I'm not there yet. But if I do get there, I'll let you know. Uh, and then there's, there's also the LaTeX links, uh, which we work on 341. You can use those if you want. Uh, we talk about those at great length in 341, so I'm not going to talk about them here again. As well as Prot, you'll definitely need Prot for this class, so download that uh, as soon as you can and install it on your computer um, because we're kind of gonna hit the ground running here um, almost right off the bat from the first day uh, with acoustic analysis of speech. So uh, that in fact is going to be our topic for our next meeting on Friday. Um, for now, we're just talking about uh, the class and the course project. 
Um, so we have a little bit of breathing room, but not a whole lot. Um, I'm not going to say a whole lot about this course schedule. Um, I'll just say, uh, kind of to start off with, we have a little bit of review with acoustics, some of which we learned in 341. Uh, and then I talked to you about how to process acoustics in a computer, which we use quite a bit nowadays, especially, um, and which you will be using just in general as a phonetician and also for your course project. Uh, and, but then kind of the goal uh, for the initial part of the class is to talk about Toby, which is a uh, system for transcribing intonation. Um, and we talk about it specifically with respect to English. Uh, so this is something we don't really cover um, in 341 is that higher level intonation transcription. Uh, so we hit it right off the bat in this class. And then you also have a chance to, um, you know, apply that knowledge to uh, the analysis of your consultant speech for your course project. Um, with that in mind, uh, over here on this column, I tell you when assignments are due. And um, these are the optional readings over here. Um, but uh, we don't have assignments until the third week, uh, which again, gives you a little bit of time to get the motor running. Uh, but the ones the the course project assignments are in bold because they're important and you need to get organized with somebody else outside of your life for that uh, or outside of this class for that. So um, I wanna give you enough time to find somebody you can work with for that. That's why the first report is only due on the fifth week. Uh, and then after that, you kind of have to meet relatively regularly to get these done. Um, one thing I will say about that with respect to deadlines uh, is that things can happen in your own life. And it turns out that things can happen in your language consultant's life as well um, that make it complicated to get these done. Uh, so if you know it's going to be a problem for you to submit these course project reports on time, let me know as soon as possible. Uh, and generally speaking for those, I'm happy to give you, or not happy, but definitely willing to give you an extension. Um, you know, obviously don't abuse that principle because it's better to get things done on time. But uh, I know that things get complicated once more people get involved. Um, but keep these in mind because um, these are kind of the big milestones to hit. Uh, the rest uh, you should be able to handle on your own, um, or at least with the help of paying attention in class. So after we walk, talk through intonation, we talk about uh, kind of build up speech from the bottom, going all the way down to the lungs this time, talking about respiration, and then moving up through the larynx and learning about voice quality and so on and so forth. There's an interesting application to that to the um, to stops in Korean, um, which you may or may not know about. The midterm is on the 14th. Of October. After the midterm, we talk more about um, acoustics and how we can translate from articulation to the acoustics of vowel formants, uh, and then move on to like uh, nasals and sonorants. And then at the end, we talk a little bit about perception, which is kind of fun. Things like the categorical perception effect and the motor theory of perception, and eventually the exemplar theory of perception, which is one I've worked on a fair bit uh, with a detour through um, audition or uh, hearing in the middle. Uh, there's also a palatography demo day where I yeah, you know, or somebody <laughs> puts black goo on their tongue and then says various interesting sounds in some language. Uh, and then we take pictures of what happened in their mouth. That's that's always a good time. So put that on your calendar and be ready for that fun. Uh, and then lastly, there's a little bit about speech synthesis. And then because I'm not exactly sure how to fit this class into a Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule, I've got one day in here for a catch up and review and we'll see what happens um, by the time we get to the end of the semester. Uh, yeah, I'm going to stop talking about all this now. Um, hopefully that all is clear. Uh, but there's a whole nother video we have to work through on the course project. So I don't want to take any more of your time with this and I'll see you there.